about an $80 mount. These just a few tugs here. But, uh, So if you've ever been on Amazon looking up gear, gun gear, tactical gear, things like that, you are inundated with hard to pronounce copycat cheap Chinese knockoff gear, one after another after another. And you look at some of the ratings and you are led to believe that this stuff is just as good as the competition. Are we going to solve that today? No. But a company did get a hold of me, and this is a, uh, what I would say, a budget to cheap Chinese knockoff of other well-known bump lids, fast helmets. And this is from a company called Lugu, L-O-O-G-U. And I thought I would go ahead and check it out just to see what the quality was like and let you guys know. Now when it comes to some of the cheap Chinese knockoff gear on Amazon, uh, especially when it comes to nylon gear, some of that stuff has been really stepping up the game. Um, there's a company called Crydex that I can think of. Uh, they are one that when I see something from them, I... <sighs> I've had, I have, I currently have uh, some of their stuff and as it pertains to nylon gear, it's actually not too bad, especially for the price. When it comes to helmets, when it comes to ballistic helmets specifically, and you find one of those too good to be true prices on Amazon for a cheap ballistic helmet, I 100% of the time warn people to stay away. If you're getting a ballistic helmet for say under five or $600, uh, $700, something like that, um, but really kind of that 500 low end mark, um, I absolutely am not going to trust it at all. Um, but as it pertains to bump lids, what do bump lids really do? What are, what's the purpose of a bump lid? So obviously bumps. Is it a good hard plastic material, which is what most bump lids are? In this case, this one is. It doesn't have the best form structure, but as far as if I bump my head on say, a low door, uh, a tree branch, something like that with this on, am I going to knock myself out, get a concussion or something like that? Likely no. So as far as bump lid goes, purely bump lid, um, I don't see a problem here. Second is to mount things to it. So a bump lid is going to mostly carry your stuff. And when I mean carry your stuff, ears, nods some sort of amount up here in the shroud um, so let's test out real quick how that works out so first this is a pretty standard 3m ear pro mount and we're going to see if this fits i have not tried this yet It is, it actually fits pretty good. It's tight enough that it's not gonna slop around. Let me get this open here, there we go. Yeah, so I'm actually going to need to get a, a flathead screwdriver or a tool to uh, lift that detent. Um, I have seen these bump lids to where uh, these, are, these rails are severely out of spec and things like these 3M mounts will just slide on and the lock tab doesn't lock in, things like that. They're almost loose on the rail or things that are so overly tight that you actually need a hammer to like push it onto the rail because the dovetail of the rail is so out of spec. This doesn't seem too bad. There we go. Yeah, this doesn't seem all that bad. See if I can get it on the other direction. I don't seem to be able to slide this on the other direction from the front. Nope. But from the back side, I can. 
yeah from the back side i can just not the front side so take that for what you will as far as as far as fit but i think this locks on there pretty good uh there may be some i'm i'm shaving a little bit of material off here so again i've seen them good and both bad this is somewhere in the middle this seems to fit pretty good going this way but doesn't quite seem to fit going this way now with that said you can always run ear pro on your head and remove some of the padding we're going to get into a padding here in a second remove some of the padding uh, from the helmet and actually put the helmet over your ear pro uh, band um, not a, not an excuse for that not sliding on the front but um, it is an option so here is another ear pro mount this is the type that goes on the back of the rail so this is the right side and Oh, that is tight. That is extremely tight. So um, it seems to be a little bit tight there. It was, is not that tight on the helmet that I normally have these on, which is another bump lid that I have. Um, but if you're able to get that in there, it seems like it's going to lock in just fine. It's just sort of a pain to get in there. Now for the shroud, we're going to do a little bit of destructive testing here. So this is the uh, mount for the Armasite um, 320 and 640 sidekick this is a very expensive very well made mount um, so we're going to see if this fits that does seem to fit and it's not coming unlocked very easy but while being loose isn't necessarily from mount to mount and helmet to helmet all that uncommon it is just a little loose on there but it doesn't seem to be coming off let's try another one so this is a dovetail mount lock that on this is just your standard um, dovetail not mount not rhino mount but your standard night vision pbs 14 type uh, dovetail mount and it locks on just fine and i guess let me get back here a little bit and see if I didn't do this with the armor sight mount because it's far too expensive a mount so I picked this mount out off of Amazon it's a mid-range mount it's not the cheapest one out there but it's also not the most expensive it's about an $80 mount so I'm going to say that this thing is landing right on the end of the mount and it's not busting off the mount hasn't bent oh the mount did bend Ooh, the mount bent so the aluminum mount bent before the uh hood or before the uh, uh um, shroud gave out so that's good and this is even a polymer shroud this isn't a metal shroud i normally uh, am very big on metal shrouds this one being polymer i wasn't sure how it was going to hold up but I bent them out, so it held up pretty good. Now let's give the bungees just a few tugs here. Let's give the other bungee just a few tugs here. Okay, those aren't in there very good. They're held in there by a little piece of, as uh, a zip tie, and they popped right out. Um, the shroud held up very well. The uh, rails seem to be sized okay the straps let's give these a tug they seem to be holding up pretty well actually they seem to be holding up quite well that's that was a lot on those a lot of shock this brings me to the pads and comfort. Now I saved pads and comfort for last for a reason. So some people out there may be like, well, comfort outside of like 
the protective quality, comfort has to be like first priority. It has to be comfortable on my head. No helmet is comfortable on your head. <laughs> uh, I saved it for last because if you spent any time, if you spent any amount of time wearing helmets, whether they're bump helmets or ballistic helmets, uh, for long periods of time, you have done everything in the inside of this helmet different than the way it came. Um, so I, when it comes to the padding, I like padding to be nice, but even if it's nice, soft, or not hot spot padding, or the padding's in good places and things like that, uh, still, I don't know anybody who hasn't at least radically rearranged the padding in their helmet to help fit their head better, so less hot spots and things like that. Um, and so this was no different in my mind. Uh, I didn't figure the padding was gonna be awesome, um, but padding is one of those things that I already plan on changing in a helmet. And again, if you've ever spent any amount of time in a helmet, you probably do too. So the, one of the things to go along with padding is that the cheap Chinese helmets tend to not be sized very well. So like if you wear a large or extra large in a high quality one, the, the Chinese knockoff may not fit correctly based off of the same large or extra large um, you know, uh, uh, description. This seems to fit well. So my Ballistic Armor Co helmet, my other bump lid, those are both the same size. Actually, my bump lid is a size smaller. I got the Ballistic Armor Co helmet a little too big, so I've had to build the padding up in it. Um, but this seems to fit well. It is uncomfortable as all get out. These are horrible, horrible fucking pads in it. Um, but again, it's one of those things where pads are something that uh, I plan on changing in a helmet anyway. You can get pad sets for a very reasonable amount of money. Uh, so if you're purchasing a very inexpensive helmet, you have wiggle room to buy a nice set of pads. Now back here is the adjustment for the harness so it does have a turnstile type adjustment on it and i suppose the last feature being uh, all the velcro the velcro is all in the same places that any other helmet really is um, i put helmet covers on most things and so the velcro on here means you know very little to me uh, as long as it's in the right places to uh uh, uh stick my helmet cover on all right so one final test is I've told you everything there is to know about the helmet, how things fit. I did say that it was made for bumping. Let's see if we can crack it. Now, I have already dropped it a few times with the mounts uh, in the shroud here and with some scratching here, that's about it. But uh, hey, wow. Okay. Ah. Oh, I cracked it. I cracked it. Does that mean that it's no good? That's an awfully big impact. You use your judgment on that. But that was, uh, you know, just like I do with anything else, I find points of failure. Um, I think... Honestly, if I got hit that hard in the head, the deflection of the plastic would be enough to, uh, uh, to give me problem. So all in all, price. Uh, just for the YouTube sensors, I'm not selling this. I'm not selling anything. I don't sell any regulated goods, so leave me alone. Uh, for price, this thing comes in at like 46 bucks. Now, use your judgment whether or not it's worth it to you or not, whether or not you trust Chinese um, you know, quality control. All right, so use your judgment. You know, do with that information what you will. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I will leave an Amazon link to that helmet down below. You can check it out for yourself. If you choose to gamble 50 bucks on it, cool. And if it doesn't work out for you, it's probably not the dumbest $50 you've ever spent. Thank you guys for watching out there. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can become a member if you want to support the channel. It gives you uh, previews to videos and members only posts, things like that. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later.